Hello and welcome to this video. Today I want to talk about comments and summary, which are comments as well, but you make them for your documentation and you can also see them in your IDE, which can be pretty handy sometimes. So first things first, what is a comment? A comment is basically just some text that you can put in your script and it will do nothing, so the compiler will ignore your comments. You can use these comments to describe your code or describe what you are doing in your code for other people that don't vote the code but maybe want to read it and understand it as well. And also you can write it for yourself if you are working on a big project and you don't know what you have done half a year ago, it's easier to understand your code when you have put some good comments. So here I directly want to state that in the most cases it's wrong to put a comment. There are some special cases where it's okay to put a comment to describe what your code is doing, but in the most cases your code should describe itself with good function names, with good method names and also with good variable names. So a good convention that does exactly this, that helps you to create good and clean code that is describing itself, is that you don't put magic numbers, but rather create a good named constant that is describing with its name what is saved inside the constant. However, that's my opinion on normal comments, but on summary comments I have a different opinion, because if you want to use summary comments, most likely you want to use them because someone else will read your code as well. And if that's the case, then some good summary comments can really help to speed up the process for the other person. For example, if you are working with two persons on a project, then it's much easier for him to work with your code in the project, for example, because he sees all the documentation in the IDE. Or if you create a documentation with, for example, Doxygen, then you have a much clearer documentation that exactly states what in your code is doing what. So then I would recommend to put some more summary comments and write some more details into your summary comments. So let me show you how to write a comment. With slash slash you can write a comment that is for only one single line, so you can't write your text in the next line. And with slash asterisk you can write a multi-line comment. You need to end your multi-line comment with asterisk slash. What you can also do is commenting out a line of code. And you can see I did this down here. And this is pretty handy because if you comment out this line of code with slash slash, then the compiler will ignore it for now. And if I need it again at some point, I can just remove the slash slash and it will be executed again by the compiler. So to give you an example, if I start this code now, you can see that our constant variable config int will be printed to the console. So 5 will be printed to the console. And if I now go back to the code and comment out our debug log line, then you can see that if I start the code, the compiler will ignore the debug log statement because it's commented out and then it will not be printed to the console. So our value 5 will not be printed to the console right now. Obviously, you can do exactly the same with the multi-line comments to comment out a whole function, for example. So here I can comment out our method public static and now this method don't exist anymore, it's just a comment. Okay, let's start with the last part of our video and this is summary. To start a summary, write three slashes followed by an opening summary tag and then you need to write three slashes followed by a closing summary tag. And between those two texts, you can write three slashes and the description for your variable. If you have already worked with XML or HTML, then you know how these tags work. If not, let me explain it to you quickly. So what we are doing here are basically XML tags, and these are started with a lesser sign, followed by your tag name, followed by a greater sign. And this is the opening tag. You always write an opening and a closing tag, and between those two tags, you can write your text. The closing tag is also started with a lesser sign, then comes a slash, the tag name, and then the greater sign again. Okay, I don't want to go into too much detail on how XML tags work. If you are interested in that, you can watch a video about that. For now, I just want to show you the basic summary tags and how to use them. And of course, this code is a bit stupid because this is only an example code to showcase some functionalities of the programming language C Sharp to you. But in the real world, if you are writing your own real code, never name a variable config int if it's describing how high the player can jump. Always choose a self-describing and clear name for your variable. For example, you can say player jump height or jump height player. Something like this would be okay and would clearly indicate what is saved inside this variable. And the same goes for your summary and for your variables. Of course, summary should be used a bit more often, 
But for example, if your variable name is player jump height, then you don't need to add a summary that says this is the variable that defines how high the player can jump because this is so obvious by the variable name. So for variables that are so obvious, you don't need summary and you don't need comments. Okay, so let's see the effects of our summary. And this is actually pretty helpful because it doesn't matter where you use the variable now. If you hover over it with your mouse, then you can see the description that we wrote inside the summary. And this is pretty handy. This is also working the same for methods. So for example, I can put a summary above the method public static. And if I now write method public static or start to write it in the code, the autocorrection will also show me the description that I wrote inside the summary. So you have two ways to see those descriptions. The first way is to write the name of your method, variable or whatever in the code. And the autocompletion will show you the description. And the second way is to hover over it in the code. And then if you hover over it with your mouse, the description will pop up as well. To show you the next two tags, I need to rewrite this method quickly. So now it will return an integer and it will take a parameter int x and it will return x times 5. Now I can add a returns tag below the summary tag and this will indicate what this method returns. And this method returns x times 5. After this, I also want to add a perm tag. A perm tag is describing what a parameter is doing. A perm tag is taking an attribute called name in which you need to put the name of the parameter that you want to describe. And then for the description, I will add the value that will be multiplied with 5. If I now hover over this parameter here, it shows me the description of the parameter. And also if I hover over the method name, it shows me what this method returns. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you learned something about documentation tags and comments. And of course, these were not all the documentation tags that are existing, but I think this selection is enough for the beginning. And if you are interested about more, you can just Google it. Okay, see you next time. Welcome to the end of this video. Hit the subscribe button to stay updated. Also, if you need some high quality assets for your game or like our channel and want to support us, feel free to check out our assets at the Unity or Unreal Asset Store. You find the link to our store pages in the description. I hope you learned something new and see you next time.